Thank you and welcome back to another edition of Compelling Ministries blog. Uh, thank you for taking your time and joining us again today. We so much appreciate your, your time and your efforts made to join in with us. So thank you. As we begin today, we're going to be discussing out of James chapter 1, and I'm going to read some scriptures here. James chapter 1 verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. And I'm going to stop right there and just interject right here that so many times we go to service and we talk about the blessings of God and being overcome with the goodness of God, but often this verse is not quoted when it's talked about being blessed. But the Bible says, James chapter 1 verse 12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. To those who love has been promised, what? A crown of life. Not those that just said a prayer, not those that just went to church, but to those who love him. The essence of our life begins and ends in love. For God is love. And we must be people who love. But on top of that, in our love, we must be Christians who overcome in our walk, our day-to-day -day walk. Those of us, we take up our cross and we follow Jesus and we die to ourselves every day. Yes, we do all of these things. And in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Yes, yes, yes. But in the middle of all this, there are temptations that do come. That how do we overcome? How do we overcome those things that attack our mind? How do we become people who trust God, believe God, but walk it out? We don't just read the word and take the word at the word, but we take the word and we walk it out. Again, let's, let's say again, blessed is the man who endures temptation. He doesn't give in to it, but endures through it and comes out the other side. Verse 13 says, let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. The temptation is not of God, but it, I will say this, many times they are allowed by God. God allows it to happen. Does it mean that he sent it? Does it mean that it came from him? It means it was allowed to happen. And the temptation comes, but why is it allowed? Let's keep reading. But each one, verse 14, each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Drawn away from what? The love of God, the, the presence of God, the essence of who he is, the reality of being in his presence. For let's be real. In the presence of God, lust it's hard to lust when you're in His presence, when you're fully devoted and given into His presence. It's hard to be greedy. It's hard to be full of lying and deceitfulness. It's hard to be full of hatred when the love of God and the goodness of God and the, the essence of who He is is overrunning my life. And I will say this, for many people, when we get tired, when we stop reading our word, when we stop praying like we should be, when we stop even going to church, when we stop worshiping, when we stop spending time in our vehicles along with God and doing the things that we know keep us strong in God. When we stop doing those things, we start giving in to the temptations of the enemy because we've been enticed and drawn away. What are we drawn away from? Our relationship with God, the very essence that holds us together by the word of his power, by, the, by that which is ours and in abundance, yes. But when I am not spending my quality time with God, I will find myself giving in to and giving heed and credence to the temptations. Because it says right here, verse 14, each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Drawn away and enticed. You give in to it. It, it comes, it calls after you. And I'm telling you, we give in because we lose our relation with God, our closeness we more or less sell out because we weren't fully devoted. 
And when we start allowing things to take our time, our emotion, our will away from the presence of God, we will find ourselves giving in to temptation and being drawn away by it. Verse 15 says, Then when desire has conceived, when the desire of sin that's inside comes alive inside of us because it's, it tries to rise up inside of us because we've lost our closeness with God. When that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Verse 16, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. And he goes on talking, but I'm going to stop right there. Do not be deceived. Do not be, de it's not the devil that draws you away. It wasn't some Christian that offended you that draw, that took you out of the, the kingdom. It wasn't some hatred. What it was was our own hatred, our own offense, our own thing that we hung on to. Offenses come, but we must let it go. Hatred tries to rise up, but we say no and we give in to the love of God. We fully surrender ourselves into the love of God and we stand in the Word of God and we take the Word of God and we endure through the temptation and we do not give in to it. Let's read some other scriptures. See over here in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you've got a Bible you can read along with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 12 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. And this is what it says, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And we often quote these verses when we get under situations and things of life that are just trying to feel like it's strangling us and we just don't know how to bear up under it. These are the verses we go to. But let's take the context of what he's talking about right here. He says, Therefore let, not, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. In other words, there's not anything out there that you're above sinning. Many of us, we think we're above it, but I'm telling you the moment we think we're above it, if we're not careful, that pride will bite us and we'll fall. It's only by the grace of God, it's only by humbling ourselves before the mighty hand of God that we can be exalted. Exalting does not come from man, it comes from God. And when it comes from man, it's not of God and it's false and it can be and lead us into sin. But I'm telling you today, even right now, no temptation has overtaken you except to such as common demand. But God is faithful. And he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But with every temptation, there comes a way of escape. His name is Jesus. It, it, it's, it's found in spending time in his presence. It's found in relationship in the presence of God, of knowing the word of God, of, of living in the word of God. And again, I want to quote, uh, read to you some scriptures here, Matthew chapter 4. And we know this as the temptation of Jesus when he was tempted of the devil. It says here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, Then Jesus was led by, up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The Spirit led him into an area that the temptation was going to happen. And it says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. And he answered and said, it is written. Now notice, when the temptation came to Jesus, when Satan came and tempted him, how did he respond? It is written. It is written. When you find yourself in a situation and, and you feel like there's temptation around you, you must get to the Word of God. And you must quote the Word of God. And not just quote it but let it be reality inside of you. Let the words of power be powerful inside of you and set you free from that temptation. Endure through it and overcome it. Do not give in to it. The enemy is coming in many ways and 
facets trying to take us out. And if we are not careful, if we lose our relation with God, we will find ourselves becoming dull of hearing. We will find ourselves becoming dull of heart, cold-hearted. And then we find ourselves alone and wondering why we're being defeated. So many of us, we've ostracized ourselves from people and we've, we've bought into the lie that I can do this on my own, but you can't. The body of Christ is a body and we need each other. And we have to stand together and fight together and encourage one another every day. We are encouraged by each other, by our story. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, Revelation tells us. The word of our testimony and we love not our lives even when faced with death. But we encourage each other. And today we are going to be encouraged. You can overcome this. You can overcome uh, uh, drug addictions and and, and sexual addictions and hatred and anger and bitterness and pride and jealousy. And the way it starts is by repenting. That is where we start. We repent of our sin and we move forward in the sense of we draw nigh unto God. In the book of James it says to cleanse your hands, you sinners. And we quote this almost every blog. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. When we repent, we now must draw near to him. And again, our example is Jesus. How did he overcome the enemy? Well, he lived a life of prayer. And brother and sisters, this is where many of us, we fall short because we don't spend enough time genuinely in prayer. And we all know that our source of power, our source of strength comes from God and it's through prayer and the reading of the word. We know these things. But I tell you, there's so many things that are fighting for your time of prayer. And if you are going to become one who overcomes the temptation, then our model is Jesus. A lifestyle of fasting, a lifestyle of prayer. So many times we find him slipping off to go and pray to the Father. We find him praying. We find him praying. The night he was betrayed, we find him praying. How did he overcome? How did he endure through the things he had to endure at the crucifixion? It was by the power that came from the presence of God. It came by his prayer life. He was a man of prayer. He was a man fully devoted and given over to the presence of the Father. And when you and I give ourselves over to the presence of the Father and we become people genuinely of prayer, and not just something we do at a church, but it becomes part of the, the very core of our lives, the very essence of who we are, a life of prayer, a life of fasting, a life given over to and hungering in the Word of God, hungering and thirsting will be filled and we will overcome. The sons of God, they are led by the Spirit of God. And when we allow the Spirit of God to overtake us, when we allow the Spirit of God to become, we, we become like Him. He is our role model. And we overcome, I'm telling you, we don't have to give in to sin. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I am contending and I am fighting for it. I am fighting every day to be more like Jesus. And I'm asking the Spirit of God to reveal to me Wherein my life does not line up completely with his word, where my attitude may have been wrong, where my, 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 even the, the, the very reasons of why I do what I do may have been off. God forgive me and I ask for restoration in my own life and I press on and I move forward and I draw closer to God and I'm cleansed by the power of his word and by the blood of the, the lamb I am cleansed and renewed and I am strengthened by his presence and it's through his presence that I overcome. It's by the strength that comes from him and him alone. Jesus was our example and we find there in, in Matthew chapter 4 he overcame and every time the enemy came at him, he would say and quote the word of God back to him. Is it not written? Or he would quote a scripture that we know as a scripture. He quoted the word that God had given. And he overcame and did not give into the temptation. 
And in like manner, we must be like Jesus and not give in to the temptation. We must not be overcome and overrun by it, but we must contend for and, and give credence to the Word of God in our relationship with Him. Friend, your relationship with God is the most important thing in your life. Many things can fall apart, but you cannot allow your relationship with God to fall apart. So many people around me, they, they believe the reading of the Word is more important than prayer and spending time with God. And I'm telling you, as important as the reading of the Word is, your life is found from His presence. It's found in abiding in Him. There are people around this world that don't even have a Bible but they know God intimately because he's not just a God of the Bible. He is a, he's a being. He's an individual personality. He is a spirit. He is life. It's not just something I experience when I read. He is what I experience when I bow on my face before him and I cry out in repentance and the mercy of God comes upon me and his goodness and faithfulness and the majesty of whom he is. How do we overcome? We overcome by being in his presence, by abiding in him, by allowing the word of God to cleanse us, by allowing him to become the everything in our lives. We give everything to be like him. I cannot allow things to rob me of my eternity. I cannot allow my relationships to rob me of my eternity. For the striving of our life should be to hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. And in like manner, many will hear on that day, Depart from me. You workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Friend, today's our day of decision. Either we will hear the word of the Lord and we will draw near to him and overcome sin or we will allow sin to overrun our lives. And we will find ourselves enemies of God. I want to encourage you today. Let's take today and let's draw near to him. And tomorrow, if we're blessed to wake up, we will draw closer to Him than we were today. Every day, more and more becoming like Him. And even as the Word says in Genesis, and talks of in Hebrews, that Enoch, he was no more, for God took him. May we become so much like Him that we are the very resemblance of who Jesus would be upon this earth because we've become so much like Him. May the Lord of glory bless you. May the Lord of gl glory keep you. May the countenance of our God be merciful and shine upon you this day. Thank you for taking your time and for joining us today. May the Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Jesus is king and the devil is still a liar. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. When you do, hit the notification bell so that YouTube's going to let you know when we've uploaded new videos. If you'd like to reach out to us for any reason, head on over to our website, www.compellingministries.com. Click the contact link in the upper left-hand corner. Or, if you prefer to reach out by mail, in the description box below, you'll find our address. God bless you all, and we'll see you in the next episode.